Welcome to the John Gets Games January 2020 Games Radar Vlog. Now today I will be discussing 25 new games of interest that I've learned about since the last one of these vlogs which came out about two and a half months ago. Now if you are interested in listening to this vlog instead of watching it, then you can do so by going to the John Gets Games podcast. And I do want to mention that I'll be going through all of these in alphabetical order. Now before we jump into the list, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video that you please click the like button for it down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Also, if you would like to directly support the channel and the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongusgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them give pretty cool perks like voting on a couple of the videos that I film each month. All right, let's now jump into the list, and the very first game is going to be Carnavalesco. Now, this is a 2020 release, and the reason this game jumped out to me uh, is mostly due to the mechanics. Uh, now, it is a dice game with some dice rolling and drafting, and the uh, designer of this game is uh, Ronald Halliday, and he designed a game called Seven Bridges, which I talked about a couple times last year, which I thought was a pretty neat take on the roll and write medium. Now, in this game, it looks like you are all competing uh, in uh, Samba school competitions with your dice. There is a pretty moderate description going on here, but uh, realistically, it seems like this is a uh, dice drafting style game where you're trying to roll and then use the dice as best you can to become the carnival director of the Brazilian carnival. Now, um, that sounds like a fun overall uh, uh, theme for a game. <laughs> Not many games involve samba dances. So yeah, I'm curious to learn a little bit more about it. At this point, there are no images of the game, although there is an image of the uh, box art and it's, you know, really nice and colorful. There's some dice on a banner over there. I actually really like the look of that box art. Uh, so the next game of uh, interest that jumped out to me is Chipmunks. Uh, now this is a pun. It has to do with chipmunks who are monks who are brewing beer. <laughs> now the uh, down here it says that this is a deck bag and uh, a pool drafting game with dice. So uh, you are uh, building out a dice pool as you're gathering resources and you're learning recipes so that your chipmunk can brew beer. I think that is an adorable thing. <laughs> Just like the last game, there are no images of gameplay, but there is a uh, image of the cover and it is so cute. <laughs> These little chipmunk monks running around holding onto uh, barley and hops and whatnot. Uh, now, I'm quite curious to see what kind of details come out about this. It looks like it's probably a uh, relatively light game considering it's listed as a 30 to 60 minute time frame. Uh, and it says uh, down here in the description as far as what you're doing, it says that you use the dice pool uh, to do two actions every single round and you're just trying to get the highest points for brewing different types of beer. So uh, I'm not sure how far they're going to lean into the chipmunk uh, pun going on there, but either way, I would definitely like to learn more about this really cute looking game. All right, the next game is Cubitos. Uh, now, the main reason I am uh, paying attention to this game realistically has to do with the designer. It's John D. Clare, and he has designed games like uh, Space Base, uh, which I really quite liked. Uh, he made Ecos, which I almost really liked, but ended up actually not liking that much. <laughs> you can listen to the Impressions vlog about that once you learn more about it. But um, either way, I think John D. Clare puts out um, some pretty interesting mechanical ideas. Now, this looks to be a racing game. It says, in Cubitos, players take on the role of participants in the annual Cube Cup, a race of strategy and luck to determine the Cubitos champion. So it looks like there is dice uh, pool building in this game as well as you're running around the racetrack. Um, there are no images of this game at all uh, or the box cover or anything. So uh, I am subscribed to this one on BoardGameGeek because I'm quite curious to see how this one actually uh, turns out. Um, I like race games in general. I don't play them very often. And the idea of a dice pool building race game sounds pretty appealing. Um, interestingly enough, just like the last game I talked about, this is also a 30 to 60 minute or so time frame. So it's probably also in the uh, light uh, weight uh, portion of gaming. And yeah, I'd like to learn more about this one. Um, <laughs> so far, we've just talked about dice games, even though we're going through all of these in alphabetical order. That's kind of funny. All right, uh, next up, we have Drifting Lance. Now, this is not a dice game. Uh, this one is a game about evolution in the Devonian period. Uh, now, in this game, it looks like you are playing cards and you are moving continents and reshaping them. You're moving animals to control the continents. And at the end of the game, each continent will be scored according to its size and the animals on it. Um, so this is 
pretty obviously an area majority type game with some hand management. And in general, I'm not crazy about area majority, but this theme is pretty uh, intriguing to me, the idea of like shifting continents around. And they do have a couple images of the game. I'm not sure if this is a prototype or not, but it looks like it's relatively abstract with a hexagonal grid and uh, a bunch of water with some uh, hexagons on top and animal uh, uh, tokens on top of those. So I'm quite curious to see uh, more details about this one, in particular, maybe some gameplay. Uh, I quite like the cover too. It's, it's very um, kind of understated. It's got this kind of classical sciencey vibe of a globe with some uh, animals uh, uh, crawling all over it. I, I think it looks pretty cool. So I definitely like to learn more about that one. All right, next up we have Exit Das Spiel plus Puzzle, uh, and then a bunch more German. Uh, so um, this is one of a couple of these that popped up onto Board Game Geek. This just happens to be the one that I subscribe to, and this is really interesting. Uh, so uh, the Exit games are one-shot um, uh, escape room in a box type games where you are uh, damaging and destroying components and doing all sorts of stuff to solve the puzzles. Now in this one, it looks like there's actually a uh, jigsaw puzzle element that you are using as you are doing this Exit game. Uh, so in this one in particular uh, that I'm looking at, it, I believe it says there are four different puzzles, but I think that might be different for each one of these experiences. And I imagine just like um, the exit games, you're probably doing some destruction of maybe some components as you're putting these puzzles together. Now, interestingly enough, uh, Ravensburger also put out a uh, series of puzzles that have uh, logic puzzles within them, so puzzles on uh, jigsaw puzzles with other types of puzzles in them, and I haven't tried those yet either, and I think this whole idea of jigsaws with um, uh, other types of puzzles in them is uh, super fascinating, so I'd love to learn more about this. Um, it's uh, designed by Inka and Marcus Brand and Juliana uh, Vorgang, and I know that Inka and Marcus Brand are the ones who did all of the exit games, so um, yeah, I'm very curious to learn more about uh, this new series that uh, Cosmos is coming out with. All right, next up we have Far Away Valley. Uh, now this is being published by Hub Games and the designer is Michael Fox II. And uh, I'm pretty sure Michael Fox II is Hub Games. Like he uh, is uh, the, the person who started that uh, company, I believe. Now, uh, the reason I'm interested in this game largely has to do with um, the, the theming and the mechanics of what's going on here. It says, uh, life in the big city moves pretty fast. So it's no surprise that more and more people are seeking something a little slower paced, whether that's a quest for knowledge, a thirst for adventure, a desire for inspiration, or a need to reconnect with your ancestors, the faraway valley offers countless opportunities to leave it all behind. Uh, now that sounds very nice, and uh, what you're doing in this game is it's worker placement, uh, where you are doing everything you can to actually keep your workers happy. Uh, it seems like at the end of the game, or maybe throughout the game, your workers might actually leave if they're not happy, and that's certainly an interesting idea. Uh, there are lots of games out there where you have to feed your workers, but I get the feeling that mechanically there's going to be more to keeping them happy than just feeding them in this game. So I'm definitely curious to see what's going on there. Uh, there are also, it says there's exploration, territory building, city building, uh, animals as a category, and uh, a whole bunch of uh, mechanisms going on with uh, uh, variable setup and square grids and a modular board and all that kind of stuff. So uh, this has a lot of things that sound quite interesting to me. Uh, I, I like uh, exploration. I like putting car tiles together. So yeah, I'm quite curious to see uh, what this one actually turns into. It says it's a 45 to 60 minute game, so it's probably not going to be too heavy, and, and that's fine by me. So uh, at the moment, there are no images of the box cover or the game in progress, and I am certainly interested in learning more. Okay, let's now move on to the next game, which is Fort. Uh, now, this re-implements a game called SPQF, which was a design and uh, published game by Grant Rodiek, who has designed other games like uh, Cry Havoc, which is one of the bigger ones, or the more well-known ones. Now, SPQF was a really strange deck-building game. Uh, I covered my impressions of it, because I actually backed the uh, Kickstarter for that, um, and uh, I covered my impressions of it, and it was had a lot of interesting ideas, but a lot of the iconography did not make a lot of sense to me, and some of the interactions were kind of strange, and so at the end of the day, I ended up actually selling this copy to somebody else. Now, Fort is a re-implementation of SPQF with um, some different art and theme. In SPQF, you were forest creatures in a uh, animal version of Rome, and in this one, you are kids making forts in the neighborhood, and I think that's uh, that both of those are honestly uh, wonderful themes. And the reason why I'm paying attention to this one is because um, on this page, there is a, a single thread uh, says, SPQF becoming Fort, and introduction. And in that, they say that uh, largely Fort is going to be the same game as SPQF, but they have modified some actions, taken some out, and added a couple new ones in, and worked on the iconography. So I am now quite curious, because I liked a lot of the ideas of SPQF, but some of the actions were 
kind of hard for me to wrap my head around, so I'm wondering if maybe some of those are maybe going to be removed from the game or streamlined in some way. So I'm quite curious to see what happens here because uh, SPQF was a really fascinating uh, starting point. It's a deck building game where you can actually, when you play cards, then before your next turn, other people can buy the cards away from you and not actually give you anything. So it's a very fluid style game with a lot of strange stuff going on. So yeah, I would definitely like to see what modifications Fort brings to it. And it also looks like it's going to have a, a wonderful uh, Kyle Farron uh, art style going on, which uh, is, uh, he's the artist for, I think, most of the games that uh, Letter Games does. So, yeah, that is Fort. Uh, next up, we have Goat N Goat, and uh, the designer of this is Hisashi Hayashi, who is a very prolific designer. He's designed very quick games as well as uh, big, heavy Euro games like Yokohama, and this looks to be on the quick side. Now, uh, from a theme perspective, it looks like there are mountain goats on cards, and you're trying to overcome various mountains, and this is a hand management game, and there is a description which I read, and I just had no idea what was going on, but then I scrolled down the page, and they actually have the English rules posted already, so I uh, read through those, and the, it seems like the main idea of this game is there are a variety of cards that come in values of like 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and there are a lot more of the low values than the high values. Now, each card also has a different color, and on your turn, you can play um, any number of cards from your hand as long as they're the same number, but could be different colors, and then you put them down into a tableau in front of you. Now, if you add a card that has a lower value than a previously played card of that color, so if you already have a green 2 out and you play a green 1, then you take all of the cards that were already out and you put them in front of you as negative points, and you're just trying to build out these stacks, and then once you have a stack that is big enough, like you have 4 green and there's a mountain that says it needs 4 green, then you discard 4 green goats to take the mountain. So it seems like it's a relatively streamlined, kind of abstract hand management style game, but I like that kind of stuff. Like, that can be quite fun. It's a 30-minute game for two to five players. Um, I think the uh, theming of goats is is certainly fun. You don't see that in games very often. Uh, the art, uh, the artistic aesthetic of the game is uh, very minimal, but also pretty darn cute. So yeah, that is Goat and Goat. It's definitely a game that I'm going to keep on my radar because I'd like to try it at some point. All right, next up we have Kemet Blood and Sand. Now this is a re-implementation of Kemet and that came out many years ago, let's see, uh, 2012. Wow, okay, that was eight years ago. <laughs> I remember when that game came out. I've been paying attention to board games for a while. Uh, anyway, I bought the original Kemet back when it first came out, and I played it a bunch, and that is a dudes-on-a-map style game where you are just heavily motivated to fight, fight, fight. It's it's a very dynamic game. Um, turtling does not make any sense, and there are a bunch of different powers you can get from a wide variety of stuff. Now, I enjoyed it well enough, but I'm not generally crazy about uh, fighting with my units versus other units on a map, even if it's um, somewhat uh, flowy. Like, uh, I generally don't like the strategic nature of dudes on a map, and this one is very tactical, as so you're just kind of running around bashing people in. Now, in this case, this is a new version of Kemet. Um, Kemet, the original game had a couple expansions come out, and in fact, the uh, designers put out a Kemet 1.5 rule set uh, electronically, which used all of the original game mechanics, uh, I'm sorry, components, but changed the mechanics up, and I don't actually know what they changed, but that was an interesting idea. But it looks like probably while they were doing that, they decided they also did not want to be restricted to the old components, so they decided to make a totally new version called Blood and Sand. Now, I imagine it's going to have a lot of the uh, base Kemet ideas that were in the original game, but it looks like they are going back to, um, maybe not the drawing board, but definitely the refining board to tweak a whole bunch of stuff. Um, they haven't uh, described uh, how in any way. They don't really have any images just yet. And I remember enjoying Kemet, but there were some things that kind of frustrated me, and honestly, I got rid of it like seven years ago, so I don't even remember what those frustrating things were. That was long before I even started this YouTube channel. Uh, so yeah, I'm curious to see what is uh, going to happen with this one. Uh, as I said, I'm not normally crazy about, uh, you know, uh, units on a map type games, but, um, you know, sometimes there is uh, one that is an exception, and this one might be it. So I'm going to keep paying attention to this, and it would not surprise me, considering how popular Kemet is, if uh, there's a lot of hype that actually uh, builds up for this new version. All right, we can now move on to La Dolce Vita. Now, uh, the first, actually, really, the only reason I'm paying attention to this is because the publisher is Spielworks. Now, this is the first of many Spielworks titles that I'll be talking about over the next many minutes. Uh, it seems like a whole bunch of titles for the next couple of years have been put onto BoardGameGeek all at the same time over the last month. And now, in particular, if you'll notice, this says it is a 2022 release. So that is two years away. And as far as the description is concerned, it just says La Dolce Vita will be simmering in the development pot for a couple of years and, uh, to be all the sweeter once it's served. So 
that's it. <laughs> There's no mechanics. Uh, there is actually a photo of the prototype being played, which surprises me. There's all these games with no images at all, and here's a game that's two years out, and they have a, a, an uh, image of the map. Now, it looks like it is a euro -y style game. There is a selling map. There appears to be a rondelle. There are dice. There are poker chips. There are tons of cubes. Ooh, there's actually a map of Italy over there, so I guess it's probably set in Italy. Uh, so that's really all I know. There's a telephone area and a speedometer area, maybe? Yeah, there's some interesting stuff going on here. Anyway, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to learning more about this one. Spillworks puts out a lot of medium to heavyweight, uh, interesting Euro-style games, and who knows, this might be one for a couple years from now. All right, next up we have Loot of Lima. Now, this apparently re-implements a game called Deduce or Die, which I've not heard of, but it's pretty old. Uh, it came out back in 2003. Now, uh, the reason this one jumped out to me is because this looks like a relatively uh, interesting deduction style game. It seems like it might be a little bit more of a logic version of Treasure Island because um, in this game, there is essentially treasure that has been hidden by pirates and you're trying to find it. Now, um, the way it works is there are a couple different types of terrain and uh, apparently there are two pieces of treasure and you just randomly pull out one of the pieces of terrain and put it into the box. So the one that is missing is where the treasure is and then all of the other tokens are spread out amongst the players. So everyone has some idea of where the treasure isn't. And then players just uh, uh, do some deduction. They ask questions of each other based off the information that they know. Uh, it looks like um, uh, down here, uh, there it is. Each turn you roll three two-sided, uh, three 12-sided dice to determine what kind of questions you can ask. For instance, how many locations have you searched between the southeast or the, and the northwest? Or how many locations in the forest have you searched between the west and the south? It says that players use these answers uh, to these questions to build overlapping clues to figure out all of the locations that have already been searched to eventually discover the locations of the treasure. Um, now, deduction can be quite fun, and it looks like uh, this is a relatively minimal game from a component perspective. Everybody's got little player shields. Uh, and behind those player shields, there are little plastic uh, kind of uh, hands of a clock, so to speak. They kind of spin around the middle of it, so it seems like it's a circular island with a mountain in the middle. And I imagine you use those to try and hone in on where the treasure is. Uh, so yeah, I'm quite interested in this game. It seems pretty neat. It's listed as a one to five player game, 60 to 90 minutes. So it's not necessarily going to be a light game. And uh, yeah, I I'm hoping to maybe see some gameplay of this one. Uh, oh, there's actually a preview uh, from the, uh, the Game Boy Geek on uh, BGG. I hadn't actually noticed that yet. Um, I should definitely watch that later. <laughs> and you can too if you're interested in this one. All right, let's now move on to the next game, which is Mariposas. Now, this is an uh, AEG game, and the designer is Elizabeth Hargrave, who designed Wingspan. Now, that obviously is a very popular game. <laughs> Most people have heard about it at this point. And uh, sticking to uh, flying animals as a theme, this game is all about monarch butterflies. So it says that every spring, millions of monarch butterflies leave Mexico to spread out across eastern North America. Every fall, millions fly back to Mexico. However, no single butterfly makes the entire round trip. I guess they probably breed and whatnot at one point, and then uh, obviously the babies come back down. Now, uh, it seems like uh, this game has a set collection and movement points. They do have an image of the board, and it appears to be a uh, hex grid, effectively, of Mexico and the eastern United States. Um, on that grid, there are different colored locations and lots of little icons. Um, there is also a board off to the side with cards on it, and I see some chrysalises and whatnot. So um, there aren't really any specifics of how this gameplay works, uh, but it does seem like you are playing throughout um, you know, seasons like spring, summer, and fall. So uh, I'm quite interested to learn more about this. I thought Wingspan was a really solid design. Um, it was not, uh, it did not end up being my favorite game. I did actually uh, sell my copy after I played it like six or so times, uh, but there were a lot of cool things in there and I expect there might be some really interesting stuff going on in this game as well. So yeah, that is Mariposas. All right, next up we have My City. Now, uh, this game uh, got a subscription for me on Board Game Geek so fast because it is a Reiner Knizia game which means it might be great or it might not. I, he designs hundreds of games. But then the description says, My City is a competitive legacy game in which you develop a city on your own playing board through the ages. So it says the game consists of 24 episodes beginning with the development of a city in the early pre-industrial stages and you progress through industrialization. Uh, during the game, you're customizing uh, your board, you're adding elements, you're altering cards, uh, you're destroying some stuff. It seems like it's a legacy game from Reiner Knizia. And to the best of my knowledge, he has not made any legacy games before. And it's kind of interesting because legacy games were so popular um, like two or three years ago. And then it seems like the market just got glutted with them. 
so now it doesn't seem like that many are coming out. Uh, but this one is being published by Cosmos, and having Reiner Knizia behind it is a very interesting thing. Um, so it seems like you can actually uh, play this as not a legacy game. It says, if you do not want to experience it as a legacy game, a double-sided game board offers an alternate setup for repeatable play. Now, um, they do have an image of the box, and it's got uh, little kind of Tetris-shaped buildings kind of falling down from the sky. Um, there's not much really else about the game, but I'm quite intrigued. It says it's a 2020 game. Also, it says it's a 45-minute game. Now, considering there are apparently 24 episodes, which I would assume means 24 game plays as you go through the Legacy uh, campaign, well, if it was a long game, that would be a problem. But if it's 45 minutes, then you could easily play a couple of those within a setting. Um, as far as mechanics are concerned, it just says tile placement, so I'm not really sure about anything else. I'm kind of curious how you're going to uh, build a Legacy city that's going to kind of persist with tiles. Uh, maybe there's some sort of locking mechanism, or maybe at the end of the uh, each game you like draw with a sharpie. I don't know. I'm quite curious to see what's going to come out of this one. All right, next up we have Public Market, and this one is being published by Talon Strike Studios. Now, uh, the reason this game jumped out to me has to do with the uh, mechanics and theme to a certain extent. It says that in this game, you are bidding on uh, draft tiles to try and fill an ice chest because you are effectively uh, going out and catching fish and then selling them at a public market. Um, it says once the, the ice chest is full, you go to the market to sell your catch uh, to try and complete contract goals, and then you go out and fill your chest back up again. Now, it does say that this is a tile laying engine building style game, and I like tile laying and I like engine building. So that alone is enough for me to pay attention to this one. Um, right now, they do have the box uh, art cover, and it looks nice. There's like a peaceful lake with a nice little uh, um, fish catching ship on it and a big mountain in the background. It looks very pleasant. And yeah, I'm curious to learn more about this one. Hopefully, they can have some, uh, some sort of gameplay video come out soon because uh, I would like to see how this one plays. All right, next up we have Remember Our Trip. Now, uh, the publisher for this one is Sh Sashi and Sashi. And this is an interesting theme for a game. Effectively, uh, everybody went out um, on vacations and now you've come back and you are recalling your vacation in a competitive environment, I believe. Uh, so it seems like every single turn, there are going to be um, these kind of like shape cards, I think, that are revealed, and players can use those to put markers on their own uh, city board, effectively saying, I recollect this being here, and I recollect that being there. And then once you have a specific patterns of stuff on your board, then I guess that lets you remember suddenly like a bigger thing, like, oh, there's a whole building right there. Remember that huge building? Because it was next to the policeman and that dog over there. And then you can claim that thing from the middle, uh, denying it from other people and giving you points. Now, that's pretty much all I've been able to glean about how the game plays, but I think that's such a neat theme. <laughs> it's not about building a city or walking through a city. It's about remembering walking through a city, and uh, I'm a sucker for uh, interesting themes. So, uh, yeah, I, I'd like to learn more about this one. This one might be one that could be uh, fun to play. All right, next up we have Ride the Rails. Now, uh, this one is a re-implementation of Rail USA, which I believe was a winsome game. Yeah. So that was a game that came out in 2014, and it seems like Ride the Rails is kind of like the second game in Capstone Games' uh, new Winsome line. Effectively, they're taking Winsome games and making them look really pretty with Ian O'Toole artwork and giving them nice boxes and whatnot, because uh, Winsome games looked like prototypes that seemed like they largely came in clamshell boxes or just uh, Ziploc bags. And uh, now this game is going to obviously has gorgeous art. They have the cover uh, online already, and it's from Ian O'Toole, who makes art that I just love. And it's just it's just stunning, honestly. So um, I did play Irish Gage, which was a game that came out last year, which was also a winsome game. And I liked it, but it was an auction stock holding game. And even though it was only about an hour long, I just don't like auctions or stock holding in games that much, so I did move my copy on. Now, this game does not have auctions. Now, it does seem like there is still stock, and you are still, I believe, laying out cubes in order to effectively lay track, and you are trying to move people all around the United States. But just the fact that there's no auction makes me much more interested in it. Uh, now, I actually have a relationship with Capstone Games. I have done uh, sponsored tutorial playthroughs for a couple of their games, and they reached out to me about this one. So it's very possible that I will do a tutorial playthrough for the final release of this game. It's not going to happen for uh, the uh, pre-order campaign. I can't remember if it's a pre-order or a Kickstarter, but um, I will hopefully be doing a tutorial playthrough for this one in like the middle of the year or so. So uh, I appear to be set to learn a lot more about this game. All right, let's now move on to Squaring Circleville. Now, this is another Spielworks title, and this one is listed for 2021, so 
It's not going to be coming out for quite some time, but this has such an amazing theme. Now, it says over here that uh, established in 1810, Circleville, Ohio derives its name from the circular portion of a large Hopewell earthwork upon which was built. Um, now, I actually looked this up on Wikipedia, and this is all true. This is a thing that actually happened. Uh, effectively, there was a town with a kind of circular center, and when the town was first built, they made circular roads, and everything was circular around this town. But then, I guess, by the uh, mid-1830s, so after like a couple decades, people were just sick of all of these circular roads and whatnot. It was just confusing. It was hard to build buildings on circular plots or on uh, curved street plots. So uh, a commission was founded and uh, people literally squared Circleville. They, they put in straight line uh, roads in this circular established city. Uh, now, right now, the game has no images of what the box art or any of that looks like. But what a fascinating idea. I mean, from a historical perspective, this is pretty fascinating. And it would not surprise me if the designer of this game, which is uh, Matt Wolf, and he's designed quite a few games, it would not surprise me if the designer started out with this um, historical anecdote, like and said, wow, I want to make a board game about that. So uh, hopefully this one is as interesting to play as it is uh, from a theme perspective, because uh, squaring a circular city is a strange idea. And yeah, I, I definitely want to learn more about this. All right. Next up, we have Stellar. Now, this is a game being published by Renegade Game Studios, and it seems like uh, this is pr a pretty lightweight game. It says, oh, it's only two players. I did not realize that. Uh, it's a two-player only game, 30 minutes, and it's a card game about being a stargazer. Uh, you're calibrating your telescope uh, to look at a whole bunch of different objects, and you're going to play cards, which are constellations, into a tableau in front of you, and you're going to try to calculate and have the most points. Um, now, that's just a really nice idea. They've got a nice image of the box art. There are no images of the gameplay play uh, so far, but um, yeah, this seems pretty neat. Uh, in general, I'm not crazy about two-player only games just because I very rarely get uh, those played. Um, if I'd noticed that before I started recording, then it's possible that this one wouldn't have made it, but anyway, it's on here. <laughs> you don't always notice everything, and I do play two-player only games sometimes, so I'm certainly uh, curious to learn more about what's going on with Stellar. All right, uh, next up we have uh, Strascendence. Now, this is a 2020 game, and uh, the reason I'm paying attention to this one is, again, because of a ridiculous theme. It says down here, this game is inspired by the dancing plague that occurred in Strasbourg in 18, uh, 1518. Sorry. It says 500 years later, the plague is coming back. Now, Strascendence is a placement bo uh, board game where you are playing a killjoy who is trying to stop the progression of this dancing mania. With dice and pawns, you will choose between protecting your places from the plague or bringing it to your enemies. <laughs> so it's listed as a dice and horror game of area influence and majority with dice rolling. And <laughs> what a silly theme. Uh, I actually remember hearing about this years ago, about this uh, the plague that like took over an entire town where people were just dancing uncontrollably for hours and hours and maybe some died from it. I don't remember exactly, but um, just this kind of mass hysteria going on. And here we go. We have another board game being made about uh, something that happened a long time ago. It, it seems kind of neat. It might not be a game I'm actually interested in, but uh, into play, but I definitely want to learn more about the mechanics of this dancing play game. All right. Next up, we have uh, Tharos, which might be how you pronounce that. Uh, this is another uh, game from publisher Spielworks. Again, they just put their whole lineup for the next three years on Board Game Geek over the last month. Now, this is listed as a 2021 game, and I'm largely interested in it because it's a Spielworks title, but uh, down below, it also says some stuff that I like. It says that uh, this game is set in the Diluvia universe, and it's a dice bag building game that lasts over four rounds. You're going to represent guilds trying to discover resources and mine, um, and it says um, that you are going to be, there's a deck of cards that could uh, help you as you're doing all this stuff, and that's pretty much it. There's like three lines on Board Game Geek, just a couple of sentences. Um, now, this is another dice bag uh, building game or dice pool building game. There's a lot of those coming out suddenly. I'm now realizing going through this list. And I like dice pool building, so uh, definitely looking forward to learning more about this one. Obviously, there are no uh, images of this one on Board Game Geek just yet. All right, next up we have The Cost, which is yet another Spielworks title, and this one is a 2020 release, so it's actually a lot closer than some of the other ones we've discussed. Now, once again, I am paying attention to this one because of the theme, and this one has a really dark theme. Uh, so it says that this uh, The Cost is a challenging economic board game that places players in the role of a company whose interest is in the asbestos industry around the world. Now, if you're not familiar with asbestos, it is an amazing material with uh, ridiculous uh, heat absorption absorbing uh, properties and a bunch of other stuff that are awesome about it. The only problem is if you breathe it, then you get 
cancer and you die. And it's it's really bad for you, which is why it has been banned from all uh, building practices for decades and decades. Um, now, that's about as much as I know about asbestos. I know that it's, it's a real shame that it's so toxic because its properties are pretty amazing in a lot of different ways. Now, in this game, you are literally playing an asbestos company where you have mines of people trying to mine out the asbestos and you're trying to uh, move it around the world. It seems like there's an action selection mechanism where you're activating whole countries to execute actions there. And uh, the game is going to go through a certain amount of rounds, or it could actually stop because of, let's see, it's in here somewhere, uh, If uh, because essentially the entire industry gets shut down because it's so hazardous. So if the world realizes uh, sooner rather than later that uh, asbestos is awful to humans, then the game could end earlier. And uh, right down here, it says, um, uh, as you're playing through the game, uh, you have to mine or refine asbestos. You have to choose between maximizing profits for short-term gains or sacrifice your hard-won money to minimize deaths, which sustains the industry. This is so dark. <laughs> so I guess the less deaths that happen, the slower the uh, the game will end because the less people die, the slower the world will realize that asbestos is an awful material. So I, I feel kind of strange about this, obviously. I think it's important to have board games that tackle really hard uh, ideas, and it definitely seems like this one is uh, doing it. Um, this game does not appear to be glorifying the asbestos industry or um, the uh, the deaths of all of the people who are associated with it. It seems like it's trying to put you into this moral dilemma situation, which um, could be pretty agonizing to play. Honestly, this might not be a fun game to play, but it's very interesting that it's being created, and I am quite interested to learn more about how these systems work. And we'll probably learn about it more soon considering it is listed as a 2020 release. So uh, yeah, that is the cost. I mean, it's right there in the name, the cost. What is the cost of asbestos? Death. <laughs> it's, it's really uh, laying it on pretty thick. And I'm quite curious to see uh, just how far the game goes. All right, next up we have Grand Trunk Journey, which is yet another Spielworks title. Uh, this one is a 2020 release and it seems like this is a train style game. You are uh, managing various uh, railway companies. You're delivering goods. Uh, it seems like there's pickup and deliver. It doesn't seem like there's actually anything particularly of note that's jumping out to me, like um, that this game does differently than others, but it's a Spielworks title and they make some pretty cool stuff. Uh, they have an image of a prototype being played and it looks like it has, you know, a map of uh, maybe the United States. I'm not exactly sure with a bunch of train tracks on it. So it looks like you're not actually laying tracks. You're maybe just moving things back around, uh, back and forth. And I don't actually play pick up and deliver games that often. And that's interesting. There appears to be two different tracks around the board. Uh, actually, I think I remember reading that uh, one of the resources in this game is time. Yeah, there's a time track uh, that indicates how many days you've actually spent with your actions. I don't know if it has a patchwork style time track or if it's just a resource that you spend while you're playing the game. I'm definitely curious to learn more about this one. All right, next up we have Traintopia. Now, this one is being published by Board and Dice, and it says down here that in this game, you are creating a futuristic train paradise with networks and routes for goods, commuters, and tourists. And in this turn, you are going to draft tiles, commuters, tourists, mailbags, or trains uh, from a public offer, and then you are gonna expand your network with these tiles. It seems like um, they do a variety of different things, like um, commuters and tourists give you points, uh, The uh, some tiles expand routes, uh, mailbags and trains can give you end game bonuses. It seems like it's got a lot of, you know, just kind of get points for doing a lot of things, expanding things type stuff going on. Now it's listed as a 30 minute game. That's interesting, it's, it's relatively short. And I have a pretty strong relationship with Board and Dice. I've made sponsored playthroughs for several of their games and they've already reached out to me about making one for this game. So I will learn a lot more about this one. It's very likely that I will do a sponsored tutorial of this game. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think we'll all learn more about this one if you pay attention to my YouTube channel. <laughs> All right, next up we have Treelings. Uh, now this is a 2020 release from Edition Spielweiss and Pegasus Spiel. And let's see here, uh, this is a game, ah, oh, that's right. Uh, so in this game, there are these trees that are essentially getting built up for a firefly festival. And the uh, tallest trees, it seems like, will be the ones that actually get to have the fireflies release off of the top of them. So there are six different guilds in this game which reside throughout the city. And you are a chief in a district and you are trying to decide which guilds you want to support and you are being pretty selfish because you would like to lure spectators to your area for the overall, uh, uh, let's see, Firefly Festival. So 
from a thematic perspective, that seems kind of nice. Uh, they do have a, a image of the box art, and it looks like it's, you know, very kind of fantasy esque with lots of uh, like kind of uh, dry brush tones going on and whatnot. Um, I'm not sure how interesting mechanically this game might actually be. There's not much details. Oh wow, it's a really short game. I didn't notice that. Two to five players, 15 to 30 minutes. So that's a very quick game. It says there's drafting and set collection. Um, in general, I'm not super excited about games that uh, last that uh, short. Uh, one thing that happens in these games right off vlogs, I oftentimes don't look at the playtime until I actually start recording. But anyway, I'm subscribed to it already along with looks like 21 other people. So I'm curious to see what actually comes of this uh, rather short game. All right. Uh, at this point, we have, it looks like, just two more games to talk about. Uh, now, this one is Tribune. It is yet another Spielworks title, and this one is actually a re-implementation of a game that came out many years ago. Let's see here. Uh, 2007, so 13 years ago. Now, uh, Tribune is a game that sounds familiar to me. I think uh, well, I started paying attention to uh, modern board gaming in 2008, so... That was right around the time that the original version of this came out. Uh, so in this game, it is a worker placement game with set collection. Um, you are going to be positioning followers out on a board, and it seems like the way the set collection works is you uh, have to actually play uh, sets of cards in order to take over specific factions out on a board. Uh, for this new version, there aren't any images of the board or the, uh, the box cover or anything. It wouldn't surprise me if it's very similar to the old game, considering it says it is a re-implementation. It says down below here, actually, it includes... Um, two of the expansions and new mechanisms and elements from the original designer. So there could be some cool stuff going on here. Uh, maybe I could have done my research and learned more about the original game, but I did not do that. Sorry. Uh, either way, it seems like you were in Rome, you're drafting cards, you're bidding on stuff, and you're doing set collection. It seems like it has stuff that I generally like to do in board games. All right, it looks like that was actually the last game. I thought there was uh, one more, but I was wrong. So that was 25 new games that I've learned about that have piqued my interest over the last couple of months, um, which is kind of a low number, surprising, uh, and when you consider the fact that um, in the past I've done these every month and I've oftentimes talked about 15 to 20 games. Uh, maybe I'm getting more picky, or maybe it's just a bit of a lull going on right now uh, between the end of last year and the start of this year. Um, I'm sure there are a whole bunch of things that I don't know about that are coming out soon, but uh, for now, this is um, all of the new stuff that I'm interested in, and uh, if uh, you know any information about any of this stuff, then feel free to comment about it, and yeah, I think that's going to bring this one to a close. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.